Hello, and welcome to the second podcast shot from the Bamboo Lab. This podcast is designed, created, and broadcast strictly for you out there who have not yet reached your peak capacity. For you thrivers, you strivers, you achievers, you dreamers. For those who may feel like you have a great deal more in you. That you haven't quite dug deeply enough to find that full peak potential. Maybe you feel you're stuck on the hamster wheel. Maybe you feel like you've been overlooked for promotions. Maybe you wonder if you're even in the right career to begin with. This is for you. Our first podcast was broadcast on January 3rd. We had some glitches. We had some technical issues. We had some cuss words. But overall, I'm pleased that we reached out to 138 downloaders and we received a great deal of positive feedback and some very constructive words as well. Onward and upward. Before we get started today, I want to take a moment to thank a very special person who really was the inspiration for this podcast. The person who put the bug in my ear and the boot to my butt to make sure we got this thing done. Dave Dick, thank you. If you don't know who Dave is, Dave is a highly accomplished human leader, thought leader, and financial advisor with Ameriprise Financial out of Dallas, Texas. Dave has inspired me, motivated me, pushed me, pulled me, and prodded me over the years. And this one goes out to him. Thank you, my friend. So if you are looking for a place to land, if you are a financial advisor looking for a new home, want to be part of a powerful, dynamic team, or if you're looking to invest some money, I think Dave's a man to consider. He has my complete confidence, respect. He's a very credible human being. Thank you, my friend. Well, it's still January. Have you set your goals for 2022? My guess is probably 50 to 60% of you have. That's good news. The bad news, only 7% of you will reach your goals this year. Why do you think you won't reach your goals? Why do you think you have a 7% chance of achieving something that as of today is extremely important to you? I just answered the question. It's because it's extremely important to you. Extremely important things don't often get done. It's important to clean out your garage, to wash your car, to change your oil. but not highly motivating. What we need to do today is to help you change the mindset that your goals aren't extremely important. Your goals are a necessity. They are your true purpose. Three weeks ago, I was having lunch at Kelly's family deer camp and I got a call from my son Dawson on a Saturday afternoon. Now, Dawson drives a Jeep, Liberty. Older model, 2006. We've been watching his tires for the past six to eight months, thinking, yeah, we got to get these things replaced eventually. They were important for us to do so. Took him to a couple of places, and they said, no, nah, you don't need new tires. These will last another year. So it was on my radar, but it was just an important thing. Well, Dawson, who's a freshman at Northern Michigan University, up in one of the coldest counties in the continental U.S., got a hold of me on a Saturday afternoon and said, Dad, my buddies and I just left the ski hill. We are parked at a gas station. We blew a tire. Four new tires are now a necessity. So by Monday morning, he had four new tires on his Jeep. We need to do the same thing for your goals. To hell with the fact that these are important. Important things don't always get done. Necessary things get done. 
So I'm going to take you through a four-step process we call the BGAP. I'm a big fan of acronyms, and this is simply an acronym for the Bamboo Goal Achievement Process. Now, I can share with you, after 25 years of coaching highly successful individuals, I never really found a goal achievement process that worked for anybody. Hence the fact that 7% of Americans achieve the goals they set at the new year. But then we found this process. We created it, actually. Four simple steps. I don't promise and I don't bet. But if I was a betting man, if I was a huge promiser, I would promise and bet the fact that you will achieve your goals this year if you follow these four steps. I have, to this day, have seen nothing as effective and efficient as the BGAT process. So, for those of you interested in looking at what you have to accomplish this year, let's get started. All right, let's look at the four steps. Step number one, set your goals. Pretty simple. My thoughts are many of you have already done that for the year. But I want you to go back and dissect those goals. Are they really a necessity? Are they just want to's, hope to's, wishes to, I'd like to? Or are they really, I am doing this? I am doing this. Come hell or high water, do or die, I am accomplishing these things this year. When you commit at that level, you become maniacally focused, laser focused. And things get done. So what I'm going to recommend is establish three goals for the year. You'll notice over the next several years that I love the number three. Three is an incredibly easy number for human, the human brain to, con- to, to contextualize, remember, and follow. So I recommend two professional goals. What are the two biggest, most jugular goals that when you hit them this year, they will have a major impact on your professional life? And then along that, add one personal goal. Not something that if you do it, eh, it'll have a nice little impact or influence on me, but something that will make a jugular change. Perhaps it's run a marathon, quit smoking, quit drinking, spend twice as much time with my loved ones. These have to be jugular, things that you will not fail. That's step number one. It's simple. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Two professional goals, one personal goal. And make sure these are clearly defined goals because clarity breeds certainty. And make sure that these three goals align with your purpose in life. Everything you do from this point forward in life Everything, every decision, every word, every action you take should be pointed directly toward your true purpose in life. I'll share with you what mine is. I I shared in the last podcast. My purpose in life is three things. To give my best and show or to give my best every single day. Number one. Number two, to show love and respect to all others, especially my family. And to myself. And number three is to live consciously. What are your purposes? When you leave this earthly existence and you know that you lived a certain way and you're happy and you're smiling and you're ready to go, what is that certain way that you lived? What is that purpose? Your goals, your three goals should be aligned directly with that purpose. All right, that's step number one. Step number two, this is the part that I never see. I've never seen it before in any goal achievement process, and it seems so damn obvious. What are the traps that you might fall into this year in your journey to hit your goals? If I called you this afternoon and said, you know what, let's go for a little hike. We're going to go on a 12-mile hike today. They're uncharted trails. 
We're going to go off trail, over hills, across streams, through fields, through swamps. But yet we know there are a number of bear traps set on that course. It might be fairly beneficial to know where those traps are set. To avoid stepping them. And it might be pretty important to have a manual with us or somebody experienced who can help us get out of that trap once we do step in it. This year is nothing but a large hike for you. And you're going to go through swamps and valleys and hills and mountains and rain and snow and wind and sunny days and warm days. And you're going to go through all the potential emotions and obstacles. Let's know where they are. So I want you to think about this. What are those things that historically have trapped you, have distracted you, derailed you, or destroyed your hike toward your goals? What are some of those things? We're all different for all of us. I'll give you an example. Well, first of all, there are two different types of traps, internal and external. Internal traps are any type of traps or distractions or derailments that exist inside your head. Some common ones I hear are low self-esteem, procrastination, bad time management, arrogance, comfort zone. Did I say insecurity? If I didn't, that's the big one. Fear of success, fear of failure, complacency. I might have said that already. There is a plethora of internal traps that cause us to get derailed as we journey toward a goal. What are your most common? What are those ones that maybe you haven't even faced yet, but you think, oh, this year I could? What about your external traps? Those are all those distractions and derailments that occur outside of your head, outside of your brain. Family issues, political issues, the economy, the market, the culture at work. Maybe a vacation you're going on, a wedding you're going to. See, traps don't all have to be negative. Many of them are extremely positive. Last year, when I sat down in January of 21 and set my BGAP goals for the year, I knew my son was graduating high school and was going on to college. I knew I was moving to a town that I've wanted to live in for the past 13 years. I knew I was going to be a grandfather for the first time to my grandson, Jack. All extremely positive things, but traps nonetheless, if we're not prepared for them. Remember, a trap is anything that can derail, distract, or destroy you. What are yours this year? What are the things over the next 11 and a half months that you see coming up outside of your head that you don't have any control over, but you might have a little influence over that could potentially set you off? List them. And add to these throughout the year. Because if you do this exercise today, you're not going to come up with every trap. You're going to forget many, and you don't even aren't even aware of a lot of them that are going to come up this year. So add to this list on a consistent basis. Because we're not going to take this BGAP process and just do it today and put it in some drawer or file it away. It's something you explore every single week, if not every single day. So those are the first two steps so far. Your goals and then the traps that could derail you, destroy, or distract you from your goals. Now, step number three, this is where the work begins. The rest is just listing things on paper. Step three are the activities that you have to do to hit those goals. We call them LMAs. They stand for Lead Measurable Activities. We track in our society so often something called lagging measurements. We track sales, our results. We track growth. We track profit. We track weight loss. Those we have no control over. Those are the byproduct of leading measures. A leading measure is anything that we can measure and quantify that you have full control over. 
the number of sales calls you make each day, the number of miles you run, the number of calories you take in, the number of hours you spend reading, the number of days you stay cigarette or alcohol free. Those are leading measures. Those are the only things that we can control, the things we do. So I want you to look at each one of your three goals now and list a handful of things that you can do on a daily or weekly basis that you have full control over and you can track and list those. So here's a, here's a good example so far. Let's keep it simple. Let's say that your goal is to lose 50 pounds this year. That's your goal. Your traps might be internally could be, well, I love to eat after nine o'clock every night. I have a sweet tooth. I've always been out of shape, so I'm not really com- I'm comfortable here. I have low self-esteem. I have a partner who consistently berates me. When I try to get in shape, my friends start to judge me more. Those are internal traps, potentially. External could be, well, we're going on vacation in February. I'll be gone for 10 days. And I know there's going to be a lot of alcohol and rich foods. I've got two weddings this year. I have a partner who loves to eat junk food and snack and go to McDonald's or Burger King on a consistent basis. Those are all external traps. Things outside of your brain that could derail you. Now, your lead measurable activities in this example would be something like, I'm going to do cardio exercise 20 minutes a day, four days a week. I'm going to do yoga three days a week for 45 minutes minimum. I'm going to lift weights for 25 minutes twice per week. I'm going to keep all of my caloric intake under 2,000 calories per day. I'm going to buy an Apple Watch or a, a Fitbit or a Garmin and track my progress. Those are things you can do that you can track and you can control that will help you reach your goals and help you avoid those traps. What are your lead measurable activities? And if you have three goals, what we normally find you're going to have between two and five lead measurable activities under each one of your goals. The key is not just to list those, but put them in a spreadsheet. Track these son of a guns. Make sure that you're keeping an eye on these. Make sure that you know at any given time, if I were to call you on the phone and say, where are you toward this uh, lead measurable this week? You could say, boom, I've exercised three times a week so far. Today, my caloric intake is at 857. These should be top of mind and tip of tongue for you. Remember, these goals are a necessity. And a necessity requires a laser-like approach. We can lollygag. We can take this half-assed if we want. That's fine. That's what 93% of people do. And that's why 93% of people of Americans do not reach their goals they set for themselves each year. This is for you 7%ers out there. And you know who you are. All right. So you've decided what your goals are. You've just laid out your traps. Know where they are. Know what they are. Internal and external. Positive and negative. Now you've got your list of lead measurable. These are the things I know, Brian. If I do these things, I'm going to hit my goal this year. The last step, the fourth step in this process, the final one is the glue that holds it all together. And that step is holding yourself accountable. This is so much easier said than done. It's so much easier for me to sit here speaking into this microphone than it is for you to accomplish this. I know that. I understand that. That's why you need help. Don't try to do this alone. We are not designed to do things like this alone. I love to consider myself a highly independent person. The Rock, the Island, the Howard Rourke of the consulting world, baloney. We all need help. And we certainly need help in our in accomplishing our goals. So the one thing I'm going to recommend that if you do this, it will make, be a major player, a major force in you sitting down December 31st of 2022 and saying, man, this was an amazing year. I hit every one of my three goals. I'm a whole, wholly and entirely new human being today. That last one is set up an A-team. Step number four, design an accountability team, a group of people who hold you accountable, or better yet, they help you hold yourself accountable. 
what this looks like is I recommend choose five to 12 people in your life who you love or at least you have a great deal of respect for. These are people you would never want to let down. Send them a quick email or a text or ask them outright, will you be on my A-team? And here's all you have to ask them. Each week on Monday morning, I'm going to send you an email. That email will tell you what I had committed to accomplishing last year, toward, last week toward my goals. And that email will tell you will tell you whether I accomplished or achieved those things I committed to. And the next paragraph will tell you what I commit to achieving this week toward my goals. Mr. or Mrs. A-Team member, all I ask is that you read the email. It'll take you 30 seconds. You do not have to respond. You do not have to answer. Just read it. Because I know that if I know if I that if I know you know what I commit to doing each week, there's a really good chance I'm going to do it because I don't want to let you down. I don't want to look like a fool. Then every Monday morning before you start work or before you start your week, send out your email to every one of your A team members and say, This is what I told you I would accomplish last week. And then right next to it, put achieved or did not achieve. And here's what I commit to accomplishing for you uh, for my goals next week. That's all you have to do. I would recommend that you have somebody on that A team who's a butt kicker. Somebody on that team will, who will hold you to the fire when you c- consistently commit to something and don't do it. Or if you're late getting your A team out on Mondays. But also that person might should be the person who will also give you inspiration when you're doing well. You don't need everyone on your A team to be that way, but it's good to find that one person who is brutally honest. For me, it's my friend, Paul. Every Monday, he gets an email from me, or, or sometimes I, I do mine on Monday evening. So they usually get to the office to people or their workshop on Tuesday morning. If they're late, if it's late, I hear from him. If I don't get at least 80% of those things accomplished, I hear from him. But when I do a great job, I hear from him. Have that person who becomes an icon each week when you say, should I do this or not? That person's face should be in your memory. It should pop up and say, get your shit done. That's your A-team. They have very, very, very big response, a very big responsibility. But they take very little time to have to do it. It's that simple. This is it. That's the four-step process. If you do those and every week you consistently do them, you're going to hit your goals. You're going to hit your goals this year. You are going to go from the 93% to the 7%. And I'll tell you, all the happiness, success, and money is in that 7%. The thing is with these goals, too, be okay changing them throughout the year. Your goals should stay fairly standard. But you might have made a mistake and realized that goal wasn't that important. I rushed into putting that in there. There's another one that's more important to me. If you really determine that, put it in there. Change it. But be a little bit careful about changing your goals and making them easier throughout the year. Don't make goals easier. Make your lead measurables more challenging. But your traps, you're going to notice traps throughout the year that you didn't put down today. Add to that list. You're going to notice that some of your lead measurable activities aren't quite exactly what you thought they should be. You might need to add, subtract to that list. And feel free to move your A-team around. Add some people to it if you'd like. Subtract a person or two if you'd like. This is about you. I've designed this process for you. Make it fit for you. Like I said earlier, this is not a process or something you create today, then tomorrow you put it into a file cabinet or it gets lost in a pile of papers on your desk. This should go with you everywhere. This is your template for 2022. This is your calling card. This is your necessity. So a minimum of once per week, and I recommend this to be on Sundays or Monday morning early, go through your VGAP, pull it out. Remind yourself of what your goals are. Look at your traps and say, ask yourself, did I step in any last week? Am I actually stepping in one right now? Am I in one? I'm not even aware of it. And then are there any of these potential traps coming up this week? Just by 
noticing that and articulating the chances of you stepping into a trap greatly diminished. Then look at your lead measurable activities. How did they fare last week? Did I hit them all? And if not, why not? Are they too easy? Are they too difficult? Are they way out of reach? Am I set up for success this week with my lead measurable activities? And then right after you do that, that's when you send your A-team out. This is a minimum of a weekly process for you to pull this sheet out and go through it. Most people actually type this up and put it above their cubicle or in their office or wherever they might work. A workshop, above their, their, their chest of tools, whatever, man, wherever they are, put it up there. Look at it consistently, but every day, pull it down and go through it. Spend five to 15 minutes going through it, just like we just said. Goals aren't important enough, and that's why they aren't reached. They're important for the most part. I'd like to do that. Sure, it would be fun if I could hit that mark. Boy, wouldn't that be something? None of that pays the bills. Not until your goals are a necessity will you actually reach that 7% and be in that group of the highest performers and producers in the world. John F. Kennedy once said, as he was uh, going around the country speaking, getting funding for his space program, he told a story of two Irish boys from a very impoverished village in Ireland. They had nothing, no shoes, tattered, ragged clothing, little food for their family. But one boy wore a little derby that his grandfather gave him. It was his most prized possession, and he loved it more than anything in the world other than his family. Every day, these two boys would frolic in the hillside, run up and down the streams, run through the woods, chase chase the, the critters, throw rocks and sticks, do what little boys do. But every day, near the end of their day, they would come across this massive stone wall. 100 feet tall and miles wide. And they knew intuitively there was something much greater beyond that wall. But they never could get there because of the wall. Day after day after day, they ran into this wall. And day after day after day, they bowed their heads, kicked the dirt, and walked home discouraged. Then one day, one of the two boys, the one who wore the prize derby, decided subconsciously, I'm done being a 93 percenter. I want to be a 7 percenter from this point forward. So he took and tore his favorite hat off his head. He looked at his friend, and before he could decide otherwise, he tossed the hat over the wall. And his compadre, his little buddy, looked at him and said, what in the hell did you do that for? And the little guy smiled with confidence gleaming in his eyes, and he said, I don't have a choice now. I must scale the wall. This is your year. Stop looking at that wall. Stop walking home discouraged, kicking the earth every day. Tear your hat off, toss it up, and scale that damn wall. I appreciate each and every one of you listening today. These podcasts will continue once a week for as long as I can continue to podcast. They will get better. They will become more raw, more powerful, or more and more consistent as we go along. This is for you. Those 93 percenters out there who want to become the 7 percenter. Those people like you who realize I have so much to offer this planet, the, this into, into this world. I'm just not offering it all. I have much more to dig, d- deeper to dig, higher to, to soar. And I want to get there, and I'm going to get there. I want to perform at my highest possible peak level. This is for you. If you've enjoyed the content today and the delivery, 
please come back again. Please send an email, a text, or a phone call to me. My email is brian at bamboolab3.com. That's brian with an I. And the number three, brian at bamboolab3.com. Feel free to text me at 616-366-2789. That's 616-366-2789. Let me know who you are when you text, please, so I can get back with you. I'd like to store your number and my contact information. And please also invite others. Who are those other 93 percenters out there that want to become 7 percenters? Who do you know who has so much more to offer and just needs the tools? Well, here at the Bamboo Lab, each week we're going to provide those tools for you. Please get out there today. Make this week count. Make it productive, positive, and profitable for you. Until next time, enjoy.